I was surrounded by a lot of Pokemon growing up, watching my siblings play some of the classic Pokemon games on their server Game Boy SP. It wasn't until I got the Nintendo DS that I got my hands on a Pokemon game for the first time with Pokemon Platinum. Since then, I have become enamored with the Pokemon franchise. As I look back on my years playing Pokemon as a kid, through the good and the bad. One thing always stuck out to me, the music. And seemingly, I'm not the only one. Fans and non-fans alike of the franchise seem to know some sort of Pokemon melody from areas in the game, even years after they've last played one. Since then, the magic of Pokemon music has been loved and celebrated through remixes, relaxing music compilations, and of course, the memes. They go to show just how stellar and memorable the music of Pokemon is. From the worldly influences behind the music, the emphasis on theme, and the innovation through technological limitations, this is understanding the music of Pokemon. It would be impossible to talk about the music of the franchise without talking about the original composer of it all. Junichi Masuda, who is often known as the director and producer of the franchise, was originally hired as just a composer and sound designer for the original Pokemon Red and Blue. This is where some of the most iconic music tunes would be brought to life, such as the opening title screen, the Pokemon Center, and the gym theme. Masuda developed his love for music as a child where he would then discover and become enamored with classical music. He became drawn to the legendary classical composer, Igor Stravinsky. Masuda's taste in music would expand from there on. By the time he was 20, he had 1300 CDs spanning from different genres from around the world. Everything from traditional Japanese music, traditional Indonesian music, all the way to European rock and jazz, with techno being his favorite genre. His worldly music influences are made apparent when looking at the music of all the games side to side, and considering what real life place in the world of which the game's region was based on. Generations 1 to 4 were based on the regions of Japan, the Kanto region being based on Japan's own Kanto, Johto being based on Japan's Kansai region, Hoenn being based on Japan's Kyushu and surrounding islands, and Sinnoh being based on the Japanese island of Hokkaido. Going forward, regions would no longer be based on areas of Japan, expanding to the west instead, from New York City with Unova, France with Kalos, Hawaii with Alola, and the UK with Galar. Masuda usually produces the gym battle for each generation. Thus, as the inspiration for the regions expands to the west, we can hear some of Masuda's love for European techno music being ingrained into the gym battle themes such as Pokemon X and Y and Pokemon Sword and Shield. Having a generation's music be inspired by the real life region they were based upon is what gives each generation its own different and distinctive sound from one another. As generations go on, and as Masuda has a greater priority of directing and producing the games, he doesn't get the chance to compose the music as much as before. In the most recent games of Pokemon Sword and Shield, it seems as though he didn't get to compose any music at all. Regardless, his philosophy when it comes to making music is instilled in the soundtracks and new composers. The idea of the game's music emphasizing the atmosphere of an area or characteristic feature of a character is the result of Masuda's mindset where he believes the music should convey the feeling of the situation the player is in. We can see examples like this such as the theme for Arceus, the god of all Pokemon, as the theme is rather daunting with thumping drums. The same can be heard in the opening theme of Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, with eerie brass instruments conveying the monstrosity of the Frankensteinish monsters before us. <laughs> The 
Music conveying a specific mood or feeling is nothing new, but the extent of Masuda's belief of this can sometimes extend into the direction of the games as well, particularly in Pokemon Black and White. The name of Getsus, one of the game's antagonists, stems from Masuda's process of looking for a sinister music term that would work as a name, where he would then come across Tritone, known as the Devil's Interval. The Devil's Interval includes the G note and the C sharp note. In German, the G note is pronounced G, and the note C sharp is pronounced as Tis, putting them together to create Getsus. Meanwhile, Getsus' son, N, who is a mathematical genius, has a theme based around the concept of prime numbers. Making C3 the center of the keyboard and making the white keys represent the number 1, we can hear in the beginning of his theme that the sound of prime numbers of 23, 19, 17, 13, 11, 7, 5, and 3 declining. Then the numbers of 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and 19 making the same sound vertically. The length of the notes are also in eighths, another prime number. By having music that ties into the theme of a specific area or character makes it more memorable as the player is now able to tie an image with that theme. But a lot of the music that comes to mind when thinking about Pokemon music are the classic themes mentioned before. The opening title screen, the Pokemon Center, and the gym theme among many others. These themes have their origins all the way back to the original Red and Blue. During the Game Boy era, Masuda had to face a lot of technological limitations between limited sound and space, forcing Masuda to get creative and problem solve. With such limited space, he was forced to have very short loops for the music. Being worried the player would find the music repetitive and annoying, not only did Masuda have to ensure the melodies were catchy and good, Masuda also had to ensure the music between each area would be distinctive and different. One way for Masuda to save space for the music on the cartridge was to use the same asset through several of the songs, especially this one chord that would become the foundation of some of the most iconic Pokemon music. It is the first chord of the musical scale going to the flat 7th, which then goes back to the first chord of the scale. In other words, a 1 flat 7 1 chord. This chord is an alternation of two notes and it gives a sense of completion. When just the two notes together are played, it sounds halfway resolved but not quite. Once it loops back to the first note, it provides that satisfying sense of completion. As my friend Remy the Rat, the residential piano genius, has described it, it's like it's tickling like the balls, balls and making, and making you calm. calm. Thank you, Remy. You can hear the chord progressions or variations of it in the iconic songs mentioned before. On top of the limited space on the cartridges, the systems of which the games have taken place on, such as the Game Boy and the DS, had very limited range in their sound quality, as lower tones didn't come out very well. As a result, the music would often be made with higher tones. Many of these iconic tunes would find their way into all generations going forward, as Masuda wants to keep the games true to their beginnings, ensuring that they all have their simple and memorable melodies. As technology improves, the composers, including Masuda at times, no longer face the same limitations as Masuda once did back in the days. They are no longer forced to make short melodies, and as a result, they're not forced to get creative and make it as catchy as before either, which may be the reason why many fans nowadays don't find the music of recent generations as memorable. As Masuda wants to step down from his role as director and producer of the games, allowing the direction of the franchise to be in the hands of younger, up-and-coming game developers, it seems he'll be taking a larger role in the composition of music again, and it's important to reflect back upon the legacy of his music for Pokemon. From Masuda's worldly influence of music from east to west, the emphasis of the music's moods and its integration into the direction of the game, and to the innovation through technological limitations, the music of Pokemon has left an everlasting impression on the players, ingraining memorable tunes and melodies into their heads for decades. With more games to come, this is Understanding the Music of Pokemon.